Factoring trinomials with leading coefficients greater than 1. Our first example, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. We need to factor this trinomial. Again, this is going to be a quadratic function crossing at the x-axis, two different spots. Okay, So we want to get, again, we want to get this into two factors or two parentheses. That's our main goal here. Before doing so, so with the coefficients of 1, all we looked at was the factors of your, our last term or our c term. Okay? This is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So with the leading coefficient of 1, we just consider the factors of c. Now, we have a leading coefficient greater than 1. So now we have to look at factors of more than just our last term, c. We need factors of our first term. What are factors of 2? What are factors of 2? 1 and 2. 2 and 1, 1 and 2. So I'm going to go 2 and 1. The leading coefficient being prime is a nice help because there's only two factors, 1 and itself. Factors of 1, 1 and 1. Okay. So in this case, we want to get a sum of negative 3. Okay. How do we get a sum? So we have to consider possibilities. We could do 2 times 1, which is 2. 1 times 1, which is 1. Since this sign is positive, both my signs will be the same sign, either both positive or both negative. Well, if they're both positive, both negative, I'm going to take the sum of these numbers. Does 2 and 1 give me 3? Right? They both give me 3, but since I want a negative 3, this is going to be negative 1 and negative 1. So this would be negative 2 and negative 1. So plugging into my equation, I'm going to take these two factors, 2 and 1. So this would be 2x and 1x, or just x. My n factors would be, I need 2 to multiply by 1, so negative 1 negative 1, plugging in these factors here, negative 1 and negative 1, we could check our work, 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x, negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, so here we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Next example, 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. Okay, this is another nice one for us because the leading factors, 2, and our n factors, c, and our n terms, c, are both prime again. So we have factors of 2, which are 2 and 1, factors of 7, which are 7 and 1. Notice the sign here is negative. Okay, so when I, when I get what I'm equal, when I have my numbers that are equal to, I have to subtract. So when I look at this, I have two options here. If I multiply 2 times 7, I get 14, and if I multiply 2 times 1, I get 1. So I have to subtract these. I can either look at this as 14 minus 1 or 1 minus 14. But in either scenario, will I get, will this equal negative 5? 14 minus 1 is 13. 1 minus 14 is negative 13. Does that give me a negative 5? No. So this scenario does not work. So I'm going to go with my, my second option. So I'm going to get rid of these lines here. So before I did 2 times 7, now I'm going to go 2 times 1, and then 1 times 7. So 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times 7 is 7. So now I'm going to, again, so my options here are 7 minus 2, or 2 minus 7. 7 minus 2 is 5, 2 minus 7 is negative 5. So I want my 2 to be positive, and I want my 7 to be negative. So I'm going to open up my two sets of parentheses. My first term is going to be 2x and x. That will give me my 2x squared. Now notice, I need the 2 to multiply with the 1. So when I FOIL, when I go back and FOIL, I'm going to do 2 times x, 2x squared, <coughs> and then 2 times whatever number is in this position. I need the 2 to multiply with the 1, so I need the 1 to be here. Therefore, the 7 by default, we'll go here. So 2 times 1, now I just got to figure out my signs. I want the 2 to be positive, so this would be positive 2. I want 7 to be negative, this would be negative 7. Again, we have opposite signs because this here is negative. Check your work. 2x times x, 2x squared. 
plus 2x times 1, 2x. Negative 7 times x, negative 7x. Negative 7 times 1, negative 7. Combine like terms, 2x squared, minus 5x, minus 7. Next example, 7r squared plus 26r minus 45. All right. So this one's again nice for us. Our leading fat, our leading coefficient here is 7. Nice thing about 7, 7 is prime. So there's only two factors for 7. So we have 7 and 1. There are multiple factors of 45. Now we could go through each one of the factors or we could just guess and check. Okay. Let's just shoot out two factors of 45. What are two factors of 45? Nine and five. Okay, 9 and 5 are factors that come up most often. So 9 and 5. All right, so again, one of these is going to be positive 9, one of these will be negative 9. Okay, and we'll figure out which one is which. So let's play with this. Let's play with these options. First one, I'm going to do 7 times 9, 63. 1 times 5, 5. If I subtract 63 and 5, there's any way I'm going to get 26. So if I do 63 minus 5, or 5 minus 63, can I get 6? Can I get, excuse me, positive 26? 63 minus 5, is that positive 26? No. 5 minus 63, is that positive 26? No. So this combination doesn't work of me multiplying 7 times 9. Let's try another method. So again, do you using these factors again, I get to use them twice. Okay, so now rather than doing 7 times 9, I'm going to do 7 times 5, 1 times 9. So if I multiply 7 times 5, I get 35. If I multiply 1 times 9, I get 9. Now, can I get positive 26 from this? So if I do 35 minus 9 or 9 minus 35, will one of these options give me a positive 26? Yeah, so 35 minus 9 is equal to positive 26. So there's my two, so there's the factors of how I want it to work. So I'm going to break this up. So 7r and r takes my first position. The 7 needs to multiply with the 5. And do I want this 5 to be, the seven, do I want the 35 to be positive or negative? So positive. So 7 needs to multiply with the 5. So where's the 7 going to multiply with the 5? Again, if you picture foiling, 7 times r is 7r squared. 7 times this position. What number needs to go here? My positive 5 will have to go here. So this will be positive 5 and now give me my positive 35 here. What's left? Well, then my only other number left is 9. So that means 9 has to go here. And what sign does it have to be? Well, the signs have to be opposite. So this will have to be a negative 9. If we finish this through, just check it. 7 times 5 is positive 35r minus 9r minus 45. Simplify this, and you should have 7r squared plus 26r minus 45. Now, your first guess of 9 and 5 were nice. Can we have used other factors of 45? Sure. Would they have worked? Probably not. Okay, so this is where a little guess and check and really knowing your multiplication facts will come in handy. 9x squared plus 30x minus 24. After doing several of these, I'm naturally, it doesn't always work, but naturally when I see a number like 9, it's a perfect square. I could think 9 and 1, but I'm, I'm really, my first gut is going by 3 and 3. And my first thing is to say, okay, I'm going to break this up into 3 times 3. Now I need to get 30. So what are factors of 24? I could do 8 and 3 for factors in 24, 6 and 4 for factors in 4, 24 and 1, 1 and tw uh, tw 2 and 12, and so on. So we could try a bunch of those. So 3 times 8, 24. 3 times 9, I'm sorry, 3 times 3, 9. 24 and 9, can I get 30? No way. 3 times 3, 9. 3 times 8, nothing changes there, so it's the same thing. Can I get that? So this group is no good. Next group. 3 times 6, 18. 3 times 4, 12. I got 18 and 12. Can I get 30? Can I get 30? Be careful here, though. 
3 times 6 is 18. This is indicating that they're going to be opposite signs. So this is going to be 18 minus 12, or 12 minus 18. Will that give me 30? Will that give me 30? Now, 12 and 2. 3 times 12. 3 times 12. 36. 3 times 2. 6. Can 36 minus 30 or 6 minus 36 give me 30? Yes. Okay, so my factors here. 3x. 3x. And it, well, in this case, it doesn't matter where I put the 12 and 2 because I'm both applying both of them by 3. So 12. 2. I want my 12 to be positive because I want this to be a positive 36. So this will give me positive 36. I want my 2 to be negative. So this will give me my negative 6. If I FOIL, 3x, nope, 9x squared plus 36x minus 6x minus 24. Combine my like terms. 9x squared plus 30x minus 24. Okay, last example. Difference here. Now this is an equation because it has set equal to 0. So we're going to take it one step further and solve for x at the end. So factors of 6, factors of 14, that add up to 25. I'm going to break up my 6 and say I'm going to go with 3 and 2 at first. Factors of 14 that I could possibly try. There's only 2, 1, 1 and 14, 7 and 2. Let's try 7 and 2. 3 times 7, 21. 2 times 2, 4. Both are positive. That worked out very nicely for us. 21 and 4, 25. Again, so I'm going to break this up into two sets of parentheses. 3x and 2x. Here's my first positions. Again, the 3 has to multiply with the 7. So when you FOIL, 3 times 2x, 3 times whatever's in this position. So if the 3 needs to multiply with the 7, the 7 must be here. This is going to tell me both my signs will be the same. The fact that this middle term is positive, they're both going to be positive. So this would be plus 2 as well. Equals 0. Last step, take each factor, 3x plus 2, set equal to 0. Take 2x plus 7, set equal to 0. Solve both these equations for x. If you solve the first equation for x, you get x equals what? Negative 2 thirds. Beautiful. Negative 2 thirds. Solve the second equation for x. x equals? Negative 7 halves. Negative 7 halves. Okay, so what does this mean? So we got x equals negative 2 thirds. x equals negative 7 halves. Again, we're finding these roots, so we're factoring this to find the zeros or the roots of our parabola. So if we take these two roots, these are the two answers we got. So when x is negative 2 thirds, so if we look at a graph, a negative 2 thirds, we'll say it's approximately right here. x is negative 7 halves, so 3 and a half. 1, 2, 3, and a half. There's our two roots. So our parabola will cross the x-axis at those two coordinates. And eventually we'll learn how to find the vertex and other important factors.